I have this uh, 2010 Chrysler 300. As you can see, it has the 3.5 liter V6. Now I got a couple of ignition codes, cam sensor and crank sensor. <laughs> but what I want you to look at, because I don't think um, this is a good idea and I don't think you should do this. So what I want to alert you on is things like this, okay? Now this guy is probably a do-it-yourselfer or even maybe his mechanic maybe was trying to fix. I don't know. But anytime you do this, first of all, this is the wrong cam sensor. If you go to the parts department, Chrysler parts department, try to get a cam sensor, you will get one that looks like this. Hence the reason why they left the original connect on them. That goes into them. But I can only assume he went to the salvage yard and got a cam sensor out of any car, uh, which would probably work. Uh, as evident, it drove in, so it obviously did work. But the only problem, the connector wouldn't fit in there, so he just spliced in a connector to fit this cam sensor. Ladies and gentlemen, the way this is set up, this is dangerous, okay? These are actually live wires at this point. They're out in the open. Hypothetically, if they touch each other, one's a power supply, one's a ground, and one's a return, signal return, they touch each other, you could easily, easily burn out the computer burn out a driver short out a driver inside the computer do not do this even if you tape this up that's still dangerous uh well i mean the best thing to do is to get the right stuff so i mean i don't know the situation i don't know why they didn't get it, it might have been an emergency so who am i to judge anybody but if you've done this if you do stuff like this you you gotta try to uh eliminate doing it this way if you can't get the original sensor Okay, let me put it like this. If you're going to do it like this because of any type of emergency, tape it up at least. It's too exposed. Like I say, if they touch each other, you could easily arc out a driver inside the PCM. All right, so what I'm about to do is put in the correct cam sensor. I have a crank sensor here too. I tend to do them both at the same time for some reason. I think I got burnt one time and I've been scarred ever since. So now I do them both. Uh, you don't have to. It's just the way I do it from now on. So I'm going to eventually take this out, put in the correct one, and re-splice or rewire this harness the correct way. Okay? So, it, yes, it sets several fault codes and uh, it's running bad. So I got to start there. We have this thing in the dealership where we use the term start here. In other words, we got to do something and then take the diagnosis a step further if we have to. Okay, that way we leave the door open, okay, because no one's perfect. No one knows exactly what would fit your car. Quite frankly, everything you do on a car is uh, considered start here because you don't know. Man, this stuff is handmade, uh, man-made. You don't know what's, I don't care how much training you got. Sometimes even following the book to specs and following everything the way it's supposed to, you still could run into trouble. So without me getting off subject, let me end this right here. Get this fixed, get this spliced in. No reason for me to record it. All I'm doing is going back in with the correct cam sensor and re-splice this harness so I can use the original connector and get this out. All right, so that's all I have, man. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and uh, try not to do something like this, but if you have to, at least tape it up, all right? That's all I have, man. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, yes, I got another 1K ticker jobs lined up for this weekend, guys. This is easy peasy, too. This one's a Grand Cherokee 2011 model. That's the first year the Pentastar came out on the Grand Cherokees, okay? That's the 2011 first year production car. It has the old style rocker arms in it. Guys, my ticking issue is from the rocker arms, not the lifters. I would not waste my customer money on 24 freaking lifters, all right? Now, as far as camshaft go, I'm not getting new camshaft, all right? Based on the sound, the frequency of the yeah. sound that I'm hearing, I'm thinking I can get away with freaking uh, camshafts, right? So I'm not going to waste money on camshaft. I just got 24 rock arms, PCV valve, and uh, intake and uh, intake seals, all right? That's pretty much it all I need, guys. So I got these parts from a dealer, which means they are OEM. <laughs> Mopar, no car. I don't have no freaking Derman rock arms, man. Get out of here with that. All right, guys, my weekend is shattered. I got a lot of work to do. Stay tuned. Ooh, alrighty guys, real quick. Y'all remember the van I checked out a while back at the no crank, intermittent, no crank, no start. And I found uh, they had some uh, broken terminal, battery terminals. 
Well, look, that bear, that won't even stay on that gas. Well, y'all know what I did. Y'all know what I wrote up my estimate, right? Well, let me show y'all something what I have here, guys. Yes, y'all see these? OEM, baby. These are not Dermot, okay? These are OEM factory battery terminals, which I highly recommend you use, especially if they are replaceable. It makes no freaking sense going aftermarket on something so crucial as this. Look, I mean, one could argue this was OEM at one point in time, but this was an old minivan, so it, you know, parts will fade away, rot away, go away over time. But when you're getting ready to replace stuff, try to go back with what the factory recommend, guys. I got two OEM, positive and a negative, guys. All right, let me clean this battery up. Alrighty, guys, this is it right here. Yes, this is the van, guys. It's a recheck on me. Yes, from time to time, even I get rechecked. Now, you say this, so no. Oh, it cranks right up, guys. I gave this lady an estimate on the battery. I don't know, about a month ago, she went and took it to guess who? Cousin Pookie. Imagine that. Now, Cousin Pookie, oh, she did get the battery replaced. However, let me see something. Oh, no. That looked suspicious right off the top. What about this one? This one's tight, guys. Guys, see how flush this is? This is not even all the way on the post. This is fixable. All right, so she went and got a battery, but didn't get it. Cousin Pookie didn't. All right, lady, you got to make a choice. It's either me or Cousin Pookie. Let me show y'all how to fix this. Hey guys real quick y'all see this this is my new alternator i'm getting ready to put on this jeep compass this is the om y'all see this big old m mopar guys <laughs> we don't do derman alternators over here guys now what i want to talk about is this nut where's the nut that come off the old one all right i don't like this nut i'm not going to reuse this nut y'all see that very flimsy now what i'm going to use is the nut that come off the old one y'all see this this is a serrated what we call a serrated nut okay guys a serrated flange nut all right uh it has built, it has non-spinning washers built on it, guys. This is uh, the nut of my choice, all right? It helps prevent loosening when vibrations are present. So even if the car, even if there's a lot of vibration going on, this nut would not back off, guys. So I'd much rather use this serrated flange nut than this freaking, I have no idea. Look, they just put a nut on here and a washer. And this is the new alternator, all right? It had me thinking this was Dermot. Uh-uh, guys, what's going on with this nut right here? All right, stay tuned.